In this video, you're going to learn what the Godot game engine is and what it can do for you. We'll talk about its pros and cons so you know if it's a good fit for you. Finally, I'll give you some free resources to get started with it. Let's jump right in. Godot is a free and open source, general 2D and 3D game engine. It's a program that allows you to create games or even applications that you can then release on desktop and mobile platforms. You can also make console games with it, although you need strong programming skills or a developer who will port your game for you. A general game engine means that it's packed with features to help people create all kinds of games. You can use it to create an homage to Star Fox like Exodiac, a 2D action-adventure game like Dauphin, a 3D tower defense like TailQuest, or a beautiful side-scrolling action game like Primal Light. The limits are mostly your skills. Let's now look at the program. Godot comes with a complete editor in which you can design scenes. A scene can be a character, a weapon, an entire level, or your game's main menu, for example. You can do everything with them, including what other engines call nested prefabs. Scenes are trees of nodes. In Godot, nodes are building blocks of your game. Let's take the character we just saw as an example. It's composed of a physics body node, a sprite node, a camera node, an animation player node. Hopefully you can tell what each does from the name. Godot comes with an extensive library of these base nodes that you can compose and combine to create more powerful ones. And that's the core of the tool from a user's perspective. 2D, 3D, UI, you do most things with these nodes in written code, of course. Talking about code, you have two main gameplay programming languages at your disposal. GDScript, Godot's simple domain-specific language, or c a popular programming language. If you're a beginner, we recommend you to start with GDScript, that's the simpler of the two. Also note that to use c in Godot, you need to download the engine's special Mono Edition. On top of these two languages, you can also use C and C++ to write high-performance game code without recompiling the engine using GD Native. Ah, and there's the visual programming language, Visual Script. It works, but the interface lacks some refinement to be productive at the moment. Let's talk about some of Godot's more prominent pros and cons. This is a subjective list based on my experience. I'll start with limitations or things that can get in the way right now with Godot 3.2. Some specific editors like the tile map or that node-based interface lack maturity and can be a bit unintuitive or get in the way at times. While 3D is pretty easy in Godot, the user experience is way behind an engine like Unreal. Level editing and animation tools aren't fantastic at the moment. For now though, you can use Blender 3D instead to do all that. Godot can import levels designed in Blender directly. There is no market for add-ons and assets. There are still few of them overall, and you get limited support. Godot has a free asset library, and you can find some decent tools there. Still, we're missing something like the Blender market, where creators can get some financial support and maybe donate some of their sales to Godot. Now, here are the aspects I like the most about it. First, there are tons of features for 2D, and this side of the editor keeps getting better. It's really mature at this point. Godot being free and open source software means that you can access the source code, learn from it, and as a professional, you can hire people to fix bugs or add features. We're seeing companies do that more and more. Its domain-specific language, GDScript, has a lightweight syntax, leading to code that's short and easy to read overall. Add-on development is terrific. Godot's editor is implemented in the Godot engine, so you can extend it with the same code you use in your games. You can also run any gameplay code in the editor with its tool mode feature. You can get started fast. Godot is lightweight, it's just a 40 megabytes download for the full editor with no install required. Starting your game is also pretty fast with short compile times. And as it's free and open source software, you also get a lot of people from all around the world fixing bugs and making improvements from which you benefit. With over a thousand contributors and counting, it's growing fast. Now, Godot is completely free. It just takes a few seconds to download. Well, with my internet, more like a few minutes. But you should try it out to see if you like it. And to do so, here are some great resources. We wrote two curated guides with only free educational resources for beginners and professional developers, respectively. Here are also three tutorial series to get you started. On GD Quest, we have a 5 hours free course, Make Your First 2D Game with Godot. 
To go a bit further, Heartbeast's action RPG course takes you through the complete creation of a Zelda-like top-down 2D game. And Kids Can Code makes a wonderful site called Godot Recipes, with short, beginner-friendly tutorials that cover a specific problem and give you an efficient solution. You can find the links to all resources in the description below. If you have more questions about Godot, you can leave a comment below, or join our community on Discord. At GDQuest, we contribute to Godot and teach it. We release our code and tools as free software on GitHub. We have a ton of resources for developers, like our Godot shaders and procedural content generation, or our 2D space game. We're also on Kickstarter at the moment to find a great new course and more free content for everyone. Check it out if you're interested. As always, stay creative, have fun, let's see one another, I hope, in the next video. Bye.